Hi, here's something I don't get sent very often. In this box that I got from UPS, there are four sets of strings, three leather grips, and three Wilson rackets. No, it's not a Christmas gift. In this video, I'll be customizing these for a new customer that lives in Saudi Arabia. All right, let's get working. All right, so before I get into the goodies that was in that box, I did want to tell you about how this all came about. So a viewer that happens to live in Saudi Arabia reached out to me and asked if I could customize his frames. Actually, he wanted to match first and then I'll be customizing them. So uh, the rackets are the uh, Wilson Blade 98 in the 1619 pattern. So I'll be uh, matching those. I will be installing leather grips on each of them. So once I get them matched, then I am going to customize it uh, even more. And I'll explain how that's going to be done later on. Then once that's done, then I'm going to string it up with a hybrid setup. Uh, Battleglot VS17 natural gut on the mains. And Gamma Livewire Professional 17 on the crosses. Alright, so now let's get into it. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna take the uh, frame specifications of each one in stock form. And we'll start off with the static weight. So I have that measurement both in grams and in ounces. And next we have the frame stiffness. And generally I'm gonna run this two or three times just to make sure that the reading that I'm getting is consistent. But I'll just do this once just for demonstration purposes. Then we have the swing weight. And again, I'll do this two or three times, but I'll just do this once here. And then the fourth thing is the balance. Now I do have a, a balance rod and um, balance beam actually right here that I can take this measurement, but I prefer to use a balance board. And so what I have here is, and I also use a triangle. So what, what I'm going to use this for is as the uh, racket starts to balance uh, tilt up, then I'll just uh, bring this triangle flush up to the butt cap. And then that way I can read what's on this board a little bit easier instead of eyeballing it. So I'm just going to go ahead and rotate the knob here. And as soon as I see that racket butt cap lift up, then I'll bring it right up there and then I'll just read it right on the board. All right, so next I'm gonna install the leather grips on each of these frames. Before I install the leather grips on these three frames, I listed the specifications that I just took a little while ago. So you'll see on the three rackets under the column weight, racket number two is the lightest coming in at 297. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh these leather grips because it's a natural material and I want to make sure if there's any differences in the weight that I'm gonna install the heaviest grip of these three on racket number two. Uh, so we'll go ahead and weigh them. So that's coming in at 24. That one's at 25. And that one's also at 25. So what I'm gonna do is just move this uh, 24 gram one and I'm gonna install it on uh, racket number one, which is the heaviest. And so oh, now it's coming in at 26. Let me just make sure that these two are the same. Okay, so, all right, so that's 25. So now we got one that's 24, 25, and 26. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I install the heaviest on the lightest frame and the lightest grip on the heaviest frame. Before you install the leather grip, you wanna make sure you clean off the pallet and the butt cap with um, if there's any double stick tape. So on this one, it came off pretty cleanly on the pallet because it's a new grip, but you can see how there's some double stick tape still left on the butt cap. So you wanna make sure you clean it off. So you can use some uh, alcohol to uh, take that off. Well, you can rub it first and then remove it with the alcohol. So in the end, it should look clean like this one. And if you plan to take the USRSA certification test uh, on the uh, gripping portion of the test, you will have to remove that. So 
Uh, just a heads up in case you're planning to take that test. All right, so what I'm gonna do is on this leather grip, normally I like to pre-stretch the grip uh, just so that when I'm putting it on the, uh, the pallet, when I'm installing it, then um, it's, already, um, it's already stretched basically. Uh, but in this one, it has double stick tape on the back of it. So if it didn't have double stick tape, then I would definitely pre-stretch it. Uh, the problem with having this already on here, when you do pre-stretch it, you'll notice that uh, you notice that it'll start cracking. So that's kind of annoying when it does that. So I'm not going to pre-stretch this grip. Uh, I'll just make sure that when I'm uh, installing it, I'm really pulling it tight because that's one of the main differences about a leather grip is you have to really uh, put, apply a lot of tension and try to get that grip to stay secure. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my electric staple gun to uh, secure the grip at the butt cap. Now what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna pay attention to where I'm starting the grip because I like to have all my grips uh, the exact uh, installed the exact same way. So I'm just gonna make it a point to make sure that I start the grip with the butt cap facing up. And uh, I'm gonna go down to the floor here because I want to make sure I have a nice stable surface to um, put this tack into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down here. So you can see this. Well, it's right over here. And I'm gonna tack this in and I'll bring it up and show you after I uh, put the tack in what I'm doing here. You want to make sure that this is positioned right where you want it before you pull the trigger. All right, so that went in nicely. So what I did on this is that I, you'll notice that the, uh, the grip, normally I would like to Normally I would bring this grip right up to the edge of the butt cap, but in this particular uh, butt cap, because it's rounded, uh, you wanna make sure that you leave a little bit of a gap because when it's rounded like this, uh, if you do make it flush, then there's gonna be like a gap. Like uh, when you wrap the grip, there'll be like this gap right uh, in here. So on this one, I, I'm purposely trying to leave a little bit of a butt cap exposed because of the fact that it's rounded. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap the, the grip and I'm gonna use the table because I wanna make sure that I have a lot of leverage. So I'm gonna be uh, holding it down on the table as I'm wrapping the grip. And I just wanna make sure that this first wrap is nice and secure because uh, that's, that's the most important uh, one that you're going to be um, wrapping in terms of really securing the grip. So I'll go ahead and get it started. And I'm leaving about a sixteenth of an inch of that black portion of the butt cap right now exposed. And then now I'm overlapping the staple. And I'm pulling this pretty tightly so I want to make sure that this is going to stay in place and usually with a leather grip the overlap is a little bit less than a it's about a sixteenth of an inch I would say but it's it's less than an, uh, your typical synthetic grip and what you want to do is is that you want to make sure it's nice and smooth in the end so the surface uh, between the overlap is nice and flat. So I did check with the, uh, the customer and he did ask him if he's right or left handed. So I am, I am wrapping this right handed and that's the case for most wraps. And uh, yeah, if he said he was left handed, then I'll wrap it the other direction. So basically this is your typical wrap going counterclockwise. Uh, if you were to look at the butt cap and then look at the direction of the wrap. So as I'm wrapping this, I'm just making sure that I'm feeling this edge right here uh, where it's overlapping and making sure that it's uh, nice and flat. 
I don't want to over overlap it, so that would be um, that would leave a bump. All right, so I'm reaching the end here. Just pull the rest of this off. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark it because I wanna make sure that my cut at the end is gonna uh, result in a nice clean finished look. So. Mark it there. Now as you unravel this, you wanna make sure that you're keeping the grip nice and tight because you don't want this to unravel. Uh, so I'm gonna cut it from these two marks right here. But as I get closer to the end, I'm gonna just make sure that I'm actually holding both sides. So when I'm done with the cut, I'm still holding it right here. So, all right. All right, so I got my finishing tape right here. Gonna bring it around and all right, there. All right, so there it is. So you'll notice at the end of the butt cap, you can see that that black uh, part of the butt cap. But I wouldn't normally do this if it, the butt cap was uh, sh squared off, but because it's rounded, you want that part of the grip to go over, um, like to l end up right where that rounded portion of the butt cap is. So anyway, I'll go ahead and install the uh, other grip and uh, I'll come back to you when I start the customization. Earlier, I shared with you some specifications of each frame in stock form. And I'm gonna put up uh, more numbers here and hopefully uh, you can follow this and hopefully I can explain it in a way you can follow it. But the, the black type is the uh, original numbers. And if you look for each, uh, look at each racket uh, on the red type, now that was um, after I installed the leather grip. So it's not surprising that it did increase in weight if you notice. Um, I thought it actually would increase it by more. So let's just, for example, take racket number one. You can see how it started off at 302 grams and then it increased to 306. Um, so uh, sometimes though, when you add uh, weight to the handle like that, it actually can reduce the swing weight. So you'll notice um, for all three rackets, uh, again, racket number one, it started off at 309 and it came down to 306. Uh, racket number two went down three units and racket number three went all, down three units. So at least that was consistent for all three rackets. Now the balance, uh, yeah, it would be affected by the uh, additional weight in the handle. So in the red type, you'll notice that uh, again, you'll see um, uh, a decrease in the, the balance point. So let's first take a look at racket number two, the one with the highest swing weight, which is at 308 and um, it happens to be the lightest racket too so uh, but what we're going to do is address the swing weight first so what i wanted to do is to try and get to 310 and that was the uh, swing weight that i was shooting for so what i did first is i started off with just an inch of uh, half inch with lead tape and uh, i talked to my customer earlier and we determined that he wanted uh, the placement of the lead for more uh, stability and power. So we're gonna focus at the 10 and two areas of the frame. And so what I did, and this is just uh, right now, just scotch taped on here because I had to kind of move it around to figure it out. But I have only an inch of lead tape right there. So with that amount of uh, lead tape, it brought the swing weight up to uh, 310. And um, I'll talk more about this racket later. So then what I did is I took racket number one, which had the 306 um, swing weight. And on that one, I needed to add a little bit more weight because uh, the swing weight was lower. And again, the target is 310. 
So on this one, I have two inches of lead tape. And again, I'm focusing on that same area of the frame at 10 and two. Then finally, racket number three that had the lowest swing weight, which is at 303. Uh, I added two and a half inches of lead tape and it's in the same area. So I'll just bring all three rackets up and I don't know if you can see it, but so on all three rackets, uh, you can see that the lead tape is in the same areas at the 10 and two, but you'll notice that there's different amounts because you know each racket was different. Now going back to racket number two, because it was the lightest racket, uh, I wanted to add a, a little bit more weight, but not change the swing weight. So what I did with that one is I, I brought the, so what I needed to do is increase the weight by uh, two more grams. So right now I'm looking at column number one and you'll notice in the blue type, how racket number one is at 311 and racket number three is at 310. And uh, so those are good. I mean, that's within a gram, but racket number two is at 308. So what I did is I got two grams of lead tape, which is about four inches of half inch with lead tape. And I temporarily just taped it at the top of the grip. So with that, uh, you'll see in the green type, and that's only on racket number two, it brought it up to 310, which makes sense because that was a two grams. And as a result, um, the swing weight didn't change and uh, the balance though, it actually brought it closer to the other two rackets. So usually I don't really mess around with balance because I feel like if you get the swing weight, the balance will follow. But um, you can see that those three rackets, if you compare the balance now, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's within one point. So that's really good or point one point centimeters. All right. So what I'm going to do next is uh, go ahead and take off this temporary application of uh, lead tape and go ahead and apply it. So hopefully you followed me on all of that. If not, you might have to pause the video and maybe you can uh, look at what I'm talking about. But um, anyway, I'm going to apply the uh, lead tape and I'll come back to you. All right. So here are the final products. You can see that I placed the permanent lead tape now in the 10 and two o'clock areas of the frame and uh, at varying lengths. So now these rackets are spec the light. Uh, when I was talking to my customer about stringing the rackets, uh, he initially wanted them strung at 54 in the mains with natural gut and 50 on the crosses with the Gamma Live Wire Professional. But he also mentioned that he has arm problems. So I mentioned maybe you should try and drop the tension and just see what the racket does at lower tension. So what I'm going to do on the second racket is string it two pounds lower and the third racket two pounds lower than that. So. Uh, I'll string those rackets up and I'll take some readings and we'll see what the string bed deflection and how that affects the power. All right, so I just finished stringing up the third racket. And as I'm packing this up to ship out, I did want to share with you what those three tensions did. So you'll notice that on the mains, it uh, ranged from 50 to 54 and on the crosses uh, from 46 to 50. And the string bed deflection did vary from 52 to 59. And uh, I just thought it would be interesting to share that the uh, power percentage, and this is based on the Babylon RDC. So in a previous video, I showed uh, you how those, uh, how the measurements uh, calculates the power level. So it did range from 51 to 46. So there's a little bit of difference. and. You know, I think having these three tensions will allow my customer to really feel what the strings are doing and truly letting the strings play. It was fun working on these rackets for my customer Yule in Saudi Arabia. I know you won't get in time for Christmas, but I'm sure you're going to have a happy new year. Thanks for watching. Happy stringing and let your strings play.